Today we're going to be having a debate about whether or not the United States should get involved with Syria and overthrowing the Syrian government. To start, let's take a look where Syria is. Syria is located in the Middle East, to the west of Iraq and Iran. This area of the country is going through a lot right now, and Syria is part of the picture as to what's happening in the Middle East. Before we begin really talking about the Syrian conflict, there's a few things you need to understand. First of all, in this area of the world in the Middle East, many of these countries have been ruled by an absolute monarchy, or at least some kind of government where one person's in charge and gets to make all the decisions. Because of these types of governments being in existence in the Middle East, in many cases these rulers have been in power for decades, 20, 30, in some cases 40 years of the same person making all the decisions. These governments are typically oppressive, there are poor literacy rates. The few people that control the wealth are the ones in power, and wealth is not distributed throughout the entire population. Um, particularly women's rights issues um, in many of these countries where the, the man in power tends to keep the women oppressed. There's lots of government corruption, and there's very much limited freedom, and that includes freedom of information. Things like the newspaper and the television are oftentimes run by the person in charge, so they control access to information. What's been happening recently, however, though, is more and more young people um, are gaining access to higher education, and when they get access to higher education in other parts of the world, they're starting to question their own governments, and that's leading to some struggles over power. That brings us to something that happened um, at the beginning of last year, end of the year before, back in the end of 2010, and it's now become known as the Arab Spring. There was an anti-government protest against one of these dictatorships, these absolute monarchies, that happened in Tunisia in December of 2010. Tunisia was where this first started happening, but after the people of Tunisia started protesting their government, many other countries in the Middle East um, joined in and started protesting against their government. Both Twitter and Facebook had a lot to do with this, as more and more young people who've become sort of more enlightened about government are spreading anti-government messages through the internet where the government of the country can't control the information. Um, so far, four countries have completely overthrown their governments. Uh, two of them, Egypt and Libya, have been very much popularized over the last year. The United States got involved in helping the Libyan rebels overthrow the Libyan government. Also in Yemen and Tunisia, the governments have been overthrown. Other countries in the region have also had major to you know, between minor to major protests, including Saudi Arabia, Iran, um, and Syria, where we're going to be talking about today. Um, the protests begin in Syria um, around the same time in this Arab Spring era time period in 2011. And since the protests have been breaking out, the, the president of Syria, or the king, whatever you want to call him, begins to use violence and torture to stay in power. So here's a map again of the Middle East, and the countries in black are the countries that have completely overthrown their governments. You see Egypt here. Um, and then our con the country we're looking at today of Syria here in that dark blue shows that the key says that they are still under major protests. The darker the color, the, the more severe the protests are. Those light tan colors like in Saudi Arabia um, just show that there was minor protests there. Okay, so that brings us to the violence in Syria. After these protests break out, the president, his name is Bashir Assad, he wants to stay in power. So he starts to use violence and torture methods against the people that are opposing him. The, the idea is to scare people from protesting, because if you protest and you get caught and then you're brutally tortured or killed, well then people are going to be less likely to protest against you. At this point in time, there are starting to break out into the news reports of these terrible, terrible tortures done by Assad. So far, there's been at least 276 reported cases by Amnesty International. And now as reports of these torture and violence spread, there's increasing pressure being put on the United Nations, and particularly the United States, to get involved and help Syria overthrow Assad and to stop the violence and torture happening in Syria. So... What we have right now is that, as far as information, is that there are eyewitness accounts of people who've been tortured and then escaped to neighboring countries and told their story. Here are a few direct quotes 
from people that were involved in being tortured by the Syrian government. You see that they're pretty brutal. I'll read them to you briefly. During one of those night beating sessions, a guy had his ribs broken in front of me. Another had his back broken, but they did not take him to a hospital. In a separate account, uh, a person says, A young man from Homs was beaten in one of those sessions with metal pipes. His neck was broken and he died on the spot. I don't know where they took him. And then in a, in a third session, this is a 40-year-old man, all their names have been kept confidential for their own protection, said that he was beaten with cables, especially on his head, and told to kneel before a picture of Bashar Assad and pledge allegiance to him. So these, these stories of torture and brutality have gotten people around the world to start talking about whether or not something more needs to be done to stop Syria from doing these torturous acts. So there are some people that have spoken out in favor of the United States getting involved, including um, former presidential candidate John McCain. They've spoken in favor of giving ammunition, guns, money, and possibly even military support to the people who are protesting against Assad to help them overthrow the Syrian government. Some reasons why this would be good. Um, Syria is an ally of Iran. Iran is an enemy of the United States who consistently tries to get nuclear weapons and threaten people. And if Syria is taken out and replaced with a friendly government to the United States, then that would weaken Iran. Also, the fact that these stories of torture and violence are coming out, many people in the United States believe that the United States has a responsibility to stop things that are happening in Syria from happening, and that the United States needs to get involved, not just for political reasons, but for, for civil rights issues. People are being tortured, people are being killed um, and murdered by their government, and the United States can't let that happen anywhere in the world. And many people really believe that the United States should get involved and stop those kind of things from happening in Syria. On the flip side, there are many arguments against why the United States should get involved. In order to get involved against Syria, they, they are a major country with a major military. Um, it would be very costly in terms of money and in terms of potential human lives to invade Syria and help the rebel groups there. Are the, is the United States prepared to deal with more casualties, especially after wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? Um, the United States has been involved in, in wars in Iraq and Afghanistan for a long time. Things are finally winding down. Um, troops are supposed to be out of Afghanistan by the end of next year. And now, would you want to put troops into a different Middle Eastern country after 10 years of involvement? That would be a potential issue. Another major issue is that Syria has very powerful friends, Russia and Iran, both huge militaries, are allies of Syria. They have both stated they will help Assar stay in power. If the United States gets involved, Russia and Iran could get involved, and now you're looking at a major military conflict. Finally, things are bad in Syria. It's clear from those quotes that, that there's bad things happening, but there's bad things happening in other countries, too. Is it... Is it impossible for the United States to deal with all of those issues? Um, can the United States deal with all of those issues? Is it even the, the job of the United States to, to worry about what's happening in other countries? Those are questions that a lot of United States citizens ask. So today we're going to be having a debate. Our topic is going to be, should the U.S. help? Should the United States get involved? I would like you to think about the debate topic and the potential issues on both sides, the pros and the cons. We're going to have what's called a continuum debate. So on one side of the room, people that are in favor of military intervention are going to stand. On the other side, people in favor of ignoring the issue are going to stand. And you can stand anywhere in between. And then you're going to have to try and convince people to move toward your side of the issue. So start thinking about that now, and in a few minutes we'll have our debate.